Hello, Chem 20s. This is our last gas law lesson. Today, we're going to look at what is an ideal gas. So an ideal gas is actually a hypothetical gas. It's not actually real. But because the math is so difficult, if we take into all the accounts of an actual real gas, we have to make some assumptions. So we're going to assume this ideal gas behaves perfectly in all conditions. Now, this is going to come with three big assumptions. To be considered an ideal gas, assumption number one, we have to assume that molecules are very far apart of different of gas particles. They're going to be very far apart based on how big the size is of a gas particle. Think about this. Molecules are really, really small, right? These guys are small. When If I have one molecule of hydrogen gas or one molecule of methane gas, I can't see that with the naked eye. These guys are so small. And because there's gases, right, there's lots of spaces between them. And so because molecules are so small and spaces are so large, we're going to assume that it is negligible, the size of the molecule. So we're not going to take into account that somebody's bigger than somebody else. Assumption number two. Gas molecules travel in a straight, linear line, motion. So when they are moving, they are not going to have any forces of attraction or repulsion with one another. They are going to travel in a straight line and not be attracted to another molecule. Now, this totally goes against with what we did last chapter with bonding and the idea of intermolecular forces. We know that there are small forces of attraction and repulsion between molecules. However, for the math to work out and for this to be easier for us, because we're in high school, we're going to assume that molecules, gas molecules travel in a straight line at all times. The third assumption we're going to make for gas molecules is that when a gas molecule finally does collide, whether it's against another gas molecule or whether it's hitting the side of the container, it's never going to lose energy. It's going to hit, it's going to rebound off, and it will not lose any energy in that collision. These are three pretty big assumptions. Now, if we take a look at this, if we were going to kind of compare this ideal gas to a real gas, one that we're going to take all things into consideration, the, only, the closest these two get to each other is when we look at our ideal gas at high temperatures and low pressures. Now, this should make sense to us. If it's at high temperatures, these particles are going to be traveling much faster, which means they have less time when they go by each other to be attracted or repulsed by another gas particle. So that actually makes pretty good sense for our assumption. The other assumption is that these would make the best sense at low pressure. If they're at low pressure, that means they're going to hit the sides of the container less often. If they make contact or make collisions less often, they won't have as many collisions. Therefore, we won't have to make the assumption as many times that they do not lose energy when they collide with a container or another particle. So this picture is a perfect representation of this. Particles will move fast, no bending, no attraction, no repulsion. Plus, they're going to hit the sides of the container less often. Notice here in this ideal gas collision, they're moving slower. They're going to hit more often. They're, they're more compact in there. And this is a perfect explanation on the left here to go with that picture. Well, to me, the best part of the ideal gas law and why I love ending with it is, finally, after all these gas laws, we finally get a law where we combine all four key parts of a gas, pressure, volume temperature, and moles into one formula, and we can all talk about it in one space. So here is our new formula, PV equals NRT. Again, it has to be memorized, but four out of the five of these variables, you already know. I think you already know P stands for pressure. Pressure in this formula, though, is measured in kilopascals. V stands for volume, which is measured in liters. N is the chemical amount or the amount of substance measured in moles. T is, again, temperature measured in Kelvins. And R is the wild card. R is a constant. We call it the ideal gas constant. It should be in your data booklet on page three. If it's not, please write down R equals ideal gas constant 8.314 kpa.l 
over moles dot kelvins. Now again, this unit is critical. This unit tells me what all these variables must be measured in. Pressure must be in kilopascals. Volume must be in liters. Temperature must be in kelvins. And of course, chemical amount must be in moles. These must be plugged in in these four units exactly. Please make sure this constant is placed in your data booklet. Well, what I would like to do with you is I would like to do a question. I would like to practice doing one of these. So I'm going to grab a pen. Maybe we'll choose red here. And let's do an example. So how many moles of nitrogen? So we are trying to find moles. That's going to be my question mark. And again, we have a lot of variables. So I would really recommend making a list of when you read across something. So has a volume of 8.72 liters and a pressure of 40 PSI. But luckily, they told us the pressure in a unit we like, 275.8 kilopascals. And the temperature is 30.2 degrees Celsius. Now, we already know we don't like degrees Celsius, so we're going to add 273.15. And we're going to get our temperature to be 303.35 kelvins. Now, knowing that we're going to need to use our R value, and again, you can write it over here if you want, but we know we have it. We need liters kilopascals, kelvins, and then we're going to get our answer in moles. So this is perfect. So for one mark, we write down our formula. So our memorized formula is PV equals NRT. Now we are going to solve for N. So we're going to move R to the denominator and T to the denominator. And my formula is going to become N equals PV over RT. One mark for those two formulas, memorized and moved around. We're now going to substitute in. My pressure is 275.8 kilopascals times by my volume of 8.72 liters divide by 8.314 kPa dot liters over moles dot kelvins divided by, again, 303.35 kelvins. Now, it's at this time that I want to make sure we type this in the calculator correctly. So on your calculator, we're going to take 275.8 times 8.72, enter, divided by 8.314, enter, divided by 303.35. And my answer, if I go back, three sig figs, three sig figs, four sig figs, so my answer is going to be in three, will be 0 0.95, and we round this up, four. Calvins, Calvins, kilopascals, kilopascals, liters, liters, my answer is going to come out in moles for my third mark, because we get a mark for substituting with units in my answer. Now, this question's not done yet. There's a part B. What is the mass? So we are trying to find mass. Now, we know moles. It's given to us in part B up here. Anytime we need mass, we need molar mass. Now, I gave you a hint on many videos ago. Since the substance is nitrogen, put this into symbols. Nitrogen is N2. So when I look up the molar mass, it's 14.01, but I have two nitrogens. So this is going to be... 28.02 grams per mole. So we're going to write down our formula. Moles equals mass over molar mass. Again, this time we're solving for mass. So we're going to move our formula around. Mass equals moles times molar mass. We're going to take 0 0.954 moles but we're actually going to take the whole number that's already still in my calculator, and we're going to multiply it by 28.02 grams per mole. So full calculator number times 28.02, enter. We're allowed still only three sig figs, so my answer is 26.7, 
moles would cancel, my answer's in grams. You would still get one mark for formulas, one mark for substitution, one mark for answer in sig digs with units. So this whole question would have been out of six marks. What I would like you to do is, can you pause the video, write down question number two, and I would like you to try to do question number two before checking my answer. Okay, pause the video now. This is butane, so that's C4H10. So I have a mass of 15.0 grams. The moment I have a mass, I know I can get molar mass. So four times 12.01, plus 10 times 1.01, .01, the molar mass of butane is 58.14 grams per mole. They also tell me my volume is 10 milliliters. I don't like it in milliliters, so I'm gonna change it to liters. I'm gonna divide by a thousand. I would like to know what is the pressure I have a temperature because it says SATP. So I looked up in my data booklet and that is 298.15. And we know we have our value. So looks like I have enough information here to solve for moles. So moles equals mass over molar mass. I'm gonna take 15.0 grams, divide by 58.14 grams per mole. I'm allowed three sig figs, so 15 divided 58.14. I'm going to write it down in sig digs, 0 decimal 258 moles, but I'm still going to keep the full calculator number. Step number two, I've got PV equals NRT. This time I'm solving for P, so I'm going to move volume to the denominator. So P equals NRT over V. My moles was 0 0.258 moles. R value is always 8.314 kPa dot L over mol dot K. My temperature is 298.15 kelvins. And I'm going to divide by 0 0.01 0 0 0 0 liters. So take my full calculator number times 8.314 times 298.15, enter, divided by 0 0.01. And I get a very, very large number. I get 63,953.02116. Again, moles, moles, calvins, calvins, liters, liters. This is going to be in kilopascals. I'm only allowed three sig digs. So I can either write this as 6.40 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4 kilopascals. Or I can move it one, two, three, divide by a thousand and say that we have 64.0 mega pascals. I think I would assume that most people would do it in kilopascals because we've never heard of mega pascals. Hope you found this easy. Again, if you're a messy person and you jump around anywhere there's just empty space, please take a second number your steps so somebody can find your work. Again, left-hand side is for organization. This is where I get rid of units I don't like. This is where I convert things. This is where I think my way through the process. One mark for formula, one mark for substitution with units, answer in sig digs with units, formulas, substitution with units, answer with sig digs and units. Six marks. Hope this helps.